We'd like to take a minute to thank this week's sponsor, Local Menace Apparel. Local Menace is a Dallas, Texas based apparel brand that is hell bent on destroying your wardrobe and has been providing the world with bad fashion since 2017. From shirts to hats to some dope ass bottle openers. Check them out at localmenace.com for all your anti-fashion needs. Don't forget to sign up for their Bad Fashion Brigade mailing list. Stay updated on new merch, weekly sales, and exclusive discounts. Because they got new merch coming out all the time with brand new shirt drops every month. Make sure to use our code POPPUNK at checkout for 25% off your order. Thanks so much. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back to another exhilarating episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? A podcast about life in the music industry. We did some cool stuff today, man. Hell this was yeah, awesome. Man. This was, we we so we sat down. Okay, so I was telling my wife how excited I was for this episode because it, it's awesome. You know, it it is it is awesome. Uh, and I pulled out the record, Man <laughs> Overboards, because yes. I have like I pulled out uh -huh. the like this is. She's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, I'm fucking doing this. I'm going to go talk to Nick from Man Overboard to today. Nick from Man Overboard. And I did. And, and it was awesome. Did. And then we did. And he's a dope-ass dude. And then, like, things are just cool. And this podcast was fucking awesome. Yeah, he's a like, good dude. And he is super knowledgeable, super good producer. And we're going to get into all that sort of stuff. And let's just, let's just, let's just go do let's it. Let's just go. Let's, let's just get into it. And we're back with another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? A podcast about life in the music industry. And not only do we have Pat, as always, here today, we have our yeah, good friend hopefully. Nick, <laughs> Br <laughs> Nick Bruzis from Man Overboard. First off, Nick, I pronounced that correct, right? No, definitely not. But it's yeah. been happening since kindergarten, oh, so Bruzis. it's all good. Okay, you know what? Bruz no, Bruzazi. Bruzazi. Okay, huh. see... See, you know, I actually I could, kinda... I could restart this whole thing if I need to. It's, no. edit. it's just <laughs> editing. <laughs> no, it's cool. I got it. it's seriously been happening since I was like in kindergarten. Brzezzi. <laughs> I can, dude, I honestly, I can understand. Like, my my last name is Tarnowski, and yeah, no one, I'm looking no one at really it right gets now. it. <laughs> and even it, and, and it's really not, I mean, you look at it, it's I feel like it's, it's pretty pretty easy, pretty like, obvious. Yeah, yours is but... yours is good. I can see where mine gets a little. You get a little jammed <laughs> up, you know. <laughs> Mine's easy. <laughs> if you can't figure out mine, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. But the thing yeah. is, cool. the thing is, though, is once you've got like figured out your last name, like the real the proper way of saying it is so much more badass, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. trying to teach. I got two little kids, so like I'm trying to teach my little girls how to say it. And they're like, Prezazi. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So yeah they're they're so just close. like, they're shocked. They're shocked that we all have that same name. She's like, wait, you and mommy both have that name? <laughs> and, and Olivia? I'm like, yeah. She's yeah. like, we all got that? I'm like, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We're like a gang. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like the little things that like blow kids' minds. You're like, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. I love that. That is... <laughs> That's yeah. that's quality right there. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, Jeez. yeah, man. So they're 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 awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into this podcast. First off, you're a founding <laughs> member of Man Overboard, a solo artist and music producer. The early days of Man Overboard, you seem to have hit the ground running. You recorded your first EP in 2008, and by mid 2009, you were already touring with accomplished acts and signed to your first record label, which is just Whoa. kind of that's like, wild it's kind of amazing so uh, that, that shit doesn't happen when you say when you say it like that <laughs> <laughs> fair enough we don't know what you guys went to um but within that like what were the early <clears throat> years for you like and then uh when working on those first songs did you know you had something special like did you have that that like it like that feeling you know what i'm talking about <clears throat> um well the early days were pretty cool because Everybody was in a band called The Front Page. Not me, but everybody else in Man Overboard was in a band called The Front Page. I recorded their band. So hmm. 
I I met them through recording. You know, Wayne was in another band called Cash In. So I I knew these guys from the so studio. So you were actually world. a producer before you were even in Man Overboard. Oh yeah, yeah. I started recording. Wow. I mean, like as a kid, like on tape, like in two ninety nine, two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I wouldn't yeah, call I myself a producer, but I definitely hung some microphones in a room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I did the same thing. I did the same thing. Still, you know, but um. Yeah, so I did all that before. I met everybody through the recording, you know. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how the early days set off. But we didn't really know. I, I, I know where I remember, and I tell bands like this in the studio, like, I try to get to the point. I remember when we were done recording Real Talk, and we were all standing out back. I mean, we're, Van Overboard is a very weed-friendly band. So, you know, <laughs> we're, we're doing our thing, and we're talking. I just remember being like, you know, like, people gotta like this right like they gotta think it's cool and we were all like i don't know like what do we even sound like and like to this day have you seen anybody in man over like what do we sound like they're like what do we even sound like dude like we have no yeah but i do remember i always try to hit that mark though with bands in the studio you know like when I when I record these bands i try to enter the band you know and be like a member of the band like I'm on everybody's team now, you know. So if this was my band, Just I would want to feel this in way. the band. Doesn't mean you're not in the band. Oh, I'm always in the <laughs> band, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I always just try to like, you know, act like a member and and I know that when the record's all said and done and you're about to go home after recording, I know the feeling of it being awful <laughs> and I know the feeling of it being like really good so like mm -hmm. i always aim for that mark of being like okay like the band just left i would be pumped so i hope that they're pumped you know yeah because i've seen we've seen we've seen both sides so vividly that it's like yeah. you know so in that what is one way that like have you ever hmm, how do i phrase this question while you're in the process while you're coming up with the records while you're doing the recordings have you ever seen yourself go hey this track is kind of going downhill like this this where we're at with this isn't it and if so how do you bring yourself back from that to still be able to leave with that this track was amazing <clears throat> feeling for, for other bands you're talking yeah, about right yeah. yeah so um i mean like early on i think I was just like recording to record. So I'm sure that happened like when I was a kid, but now, now that I'm older, um, like I don't really move past the process of putting any mics up until like everybody is on the same page as far as the songs go. Mm. You know, like day one or two is just us hanging out like me, you and Pat are right now. And me being mm. like, go ahead, Bear, like shock the world, you know, let's hear it. <laughs> and, and, and then going from there and making sure like, the psychology behind it all is like getting a, like five, six members all on the same page, agreeing yeah. on art that people will judge, you know? So I don't really move past that process till everybody is comfortable, wow. you know? And then, and then once everybody's like, yo, the song is sick. Like we are happy. I'm happy. Then like the next day we, we go to work, you know, we like start to build the songs. Yeah. Right. Pre-production awesome. and stuff is, is just so important in the, in the recording right, process. Right, right, right. And I'm by no means a button pusher, you know. It's tough for me to keep my mouth shut. I'm 100% Italian. You know, I can't stop talking <laughs> to save my life. So, like, if a part is not cool or I don't think – I just think I don't like to say, like, anything is bad. I like right. to think, like, it could just be, like, expanded upon bad. or – Right, yeah, or be a little bit cleaner or catchier yeah. or whatever. Like, I want to take the time. Because I know how to do that part, you know, there's, and this is no dig at anybody in the recording game, but I pride myself on knowing how to write the song, getting the song to the finish line, and then, you know, like getting it mixed and mastered. Like everybody can record a song, but it's like, sure. right, you know, so only so many, you know, you want each one to be like, my name's going on it. I don't want to look like an asshole. Well, and you in know? that, you help like, <laughs> like, you know, you mentioned before you even get to like the recording process, you're hanging with the guys, like, that you know being on the other end of that with uh with, when you know when i was recording with my band and my producer like we all looked forward to the hangs you know like we all just were like yeah we're we're gonna make a good song this is gonna be good but like 
are we like friends? And I know that sounds really dumb, but once you have, um, to anybody out there listening who's like trying to go into the studio or any kind of like, stuff like that, once you have like a, a good gel with the people in the room, including the producer, once you guys are all on that same page, like shit just oh, it's connects. the fun part. Yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. the fun it, part. It's, and then like, you like, you leave the ego at the door. You leave your big headedness at the door. Just because you wrote a song doesn't mean it can't be better. Or, you know, maybe you right. like this part or this part needs to be better. Like, you're going to a producer to make that happen. Like, if you want, if you want your man. song just recorded, record your song. But if you want, yeah, your do song it in your bedroom. Pro- yeah. You know? But if you want your song produced, go to somebody and like watch and learn. Dude, I literally went right. to my producer. Um, when we were recording our last single and i was like wow, dude, you didn't you... come to me <laughs> wow <laughs> i'm sorry I'm, hey I'm i'll hit you I'll, hey i'll hit you up uh, um, I'm, dude, no, I'm, bu- I'm busy dude. i'm busy bro <laughs> <laughs> but i looked at him and i was like dude like can you add like water droplets in this track right here and then just reverb he probably hated you he did <laughs> he did until like we until he heard it in the song and he's like Oh, that was actually pretty dope. <laughs> I mean, we just found. Yeah, no, song. like it's not like I, we like, think, had to go record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and just to like piggyback off what you're saying, like uh, anybody I've ever recorded, they can text me at any time of the day and ask me any question they want to ask me, regard like of management or touring or whatever it may be. You know, like I, I pride myself again on just building relationships and. I, I say to bands all the time, like, this is the fun, easy part, you know, mm-hmm. like us jumping around the studio and like high fiving because it's so sick. And we are like, what the hell is going on? This is like insane because the studio is insane. You know, like right. the, we, the gear, I just moved here. I've been in this, this studio now for about a year now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just next level, you know, so like the stuff just sounds insane too. you're like, what is happening? Did we do this? <laughs> you know, the hard part is after. Yeah. Like, now go now go make people want you know and now, uh, now get someone someone to listen Mm-mm. someone right right Which is it's a, it's a very brutal difficult. game it's a tough game out there absolutely 100%. so uh man overboard came up with the iconic defend pop punk slogan and design where did that come from and did you ever think it would end up becoming a fucking generations battle cry <laughs> absolutely not no <laughs> we never never in my life I remember Wayne holding the shirt up. It was the first, we made two shirts when we first started. The Femme Pop Punk shirt and then a pink, a pink shirt. And it said, I broke a boy's heart today in white. And it said, man overboard under it. They were nice. the two shirts we ever made. And I remember Wayne holding both of them up and me being like, are you serious, dude? Are you doing that? We're using these? That's us? And then like, you know, thank God. Wayne was like, dude, you got to come around on this, man, you know? It, it came from most precious blood that were a hardcore band, you know, and they had to fend hardcore. And okay. we, yeah. we, we were like, yeah, we should Wayne. It was all Wayne. Wayne's like the merch brain of the band. And, right. um, he, um, yeah, he was like, dude, we're taking this, like, this could be cool. <laughs> and we were like, I don't know, but you know, you care about this way more than me. Our, our, our band always had like the sections, you know, like I obviously took care of songs with Zach and, recording them and demoing and stuff like that wayne was the like i said the merch guy so no we and we never thought it would be you know what it is it's yeah, pretty insane thought, it was, you thought it was just like, gonna just, be a rad sh- like just a shirt you know just like dude we named our band man overboard nobody <laughs> thought our band was going anywhere you know we were like <laughs> i remember we were like it's between apple shampoo and man overboard and we we're like <laughs> fuck it dude no one cares. <laughs> I think I think Man Overboard's a is a is a better Way choice better. than Thank Apple God. Shampoo. Oh my God! To be honest, I, like, I still would listen to a band called Apple Shampoo. So yeah, we um, all would now. But back yeah. then, it was like naming your band after another band when we were starting was like, mm-hmm. like is this sick? Like I don't st- know. It's like you're stepping on now it's like ground. yeah, yeah. Now it's like that's what you go to first, right? I, <laughs> yeah. When, I think when I like with my last band that I I still do about it's called Cities Never Sleep and we picked up uh we did the same thing we we got our our name out of the lyrics of a Hit the Light song right so you know yeah it's, yeah it's like it's what you do first yeah so <laughs> I mean, this was back in like two thousand eight two thousand seven yeah 
Yeah, know? yeah. And back that's when we started, man. Over it started around 08, I guess. We kind of first started talking. We were called something else. We were called Geronimo back then. Still a so good that's a, that's a good name too. You, you, like, oh, you, yeah, you, yeah. You don't you don't <laughs> miss. You have you don't I actually, miss. <laughs> I actually started as guitar in the band and Zach played bass and we all worked at um, a hoagie shop down here in, in New Jersey oh, called Primo man. Hoagies. I know I, I sound so Italian yet. right now. No. I can't even help it. I haven't but, even yeah, we all yet. worked. No, I want it. Yeah, we all worked at this hoagie shop and the day before we went on tour, I cut my finger over the slicer mm. and I was like, I got to play bass, Zach. And he's like, oh, that's <laughs> fine. I'll play guitar. And I was like, I kind of want to play bass anyway. <laughs> he's like oh, i'll play guitar and i'm like oh. yeah and then bass that is, bass is fun you know because it yeah. it yeah it, i, I mean think. unless unless you're going to be one of the like you know an insane bass player it gives you a I'm lot paul more mccartney freedom. what's that yeah i'm not i'm not paul mccartney by any means <laughs> man. i'm holding it down <laughs> yeah you know playing uh playing some some pretty basic bass gives you an opportunity to just kind of go go ham on stage right. so Right, right. I try to do that. I try to do as much as it, uh, of, a, of it as I can. You know, absolutely. It's that's like, that's the fun of playing live. So yeah, with, uh, with that, in 2016, you went on a two-year hiatus and returned in 2018 with a run of shows, and then you released the single Lifeline in 2020. Which, let's be honest, 2020 was a weird fucking year. Um, yeah. Do you have any plans for any new music or shows in the future? Ah, <sighs> no. Not right now. I mean, we, we had the shows for November and December of last year. Yeah. And, you know, everything was getting crazy again, you know, yep. and we were like, I want to play shows, you know, like we put we put a lot of time and work into the band. So when we play, I want everybody to be there, you know, like I got two yeah. kids now who are like, you know, Olivia's five, Marley's going to be four. Like they understand it now. So, right. You know, like you want your family to be around and you want to play these shows for, you know, playing the show is great, but like eating the game and being backstage with everybody and like having a good time and celebrating that we are here 10 years after the fact is like more important to me. And I think it was more important to a couple of the guys in the band and we didn't like fight about it or anything, but like it wasn't easy to say like, yeah, we're not playing the shows because I mean, like they were big records for us and you know, it was it, real talk and self-titled are now 10 years, you know, and yep. it's it sucks because, you know, you we want to celebrate that. But the time just wasn't right. And now, like yeah. everybody's I mean, like Wayne lives in Austin. Justin lives in L.A. Me and Joe live and Zach live in New Jersey. Like Everybody's so spread out. That's tough, you know, to get everybody mm -hmm. back on the same page, you know, and and um, writing but, is just, you know, it, 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 you, we always write songs, but yeah. It's but that feel said, right. like when it happens, it's gonna the the payoff is gonna be so much more like worth it because you waited, like right. And you I, waited and for I the think right I thing. right, and I agree with you now. You know, like maybe two years ago, if I was doing this podcast and somebody said that, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I guess. But now <laughs> I actually mm -hmm. feel like, yeah, you know, you're right because like it, it's been, you know it's been a little bit of a mess in man overboard world just because like of, of that kind of stuff, you know, like people wanted to play, people yeah. didn't want to play. And it's just like, you know, we're trying to figure it out, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh. I, I, I'm so proud of what we did that I don't want to just play to play and like it be us beat a dead horse kind of, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And so. again, like, you know, even with like COVID situations, right. Like even with all of this right. going on, like the fans are going to, appreciate it so much more i know i would you know right like, yeah I and i want everybody to feel show, safe it's gonna be like, right i want to be able to <clears throat> like do do my worst you know what i mean right and still be totally like fucking good about it and have a good like clear conscience and yeah like, and there's, Dude, a lot, december, there's a lot to the, be said to that december our shows would have not happened even if we had even if we were all, all on board like things were yeah. so crazy yeah, this month right. it's like back to back to normal i mean like turnstiles playing the biggest shows i've ever fucking seen like it's it's back and you're like yeah. well now what like do we mm -hmm. just jump back in like all these other bands are trying to get in like we we don't need to be a full we're not a full-time band we don't need to do that so like mm -hmm. let everybody else that's like fucked jump in and make their money and play these shows like we don't need to fucking get in the way right now you know right. that's kind of how i feel 
because yeah. I record these bands. I see them. They're like, we got to go on tour. Like the sh- these tours are getting canceled. Their livelihoods are on the line. Mine isn't. Right. You know, like I'm, right. I'm good. I'm recording. So like, I don't want to like say like we're stealing spotlight or anything, but like, I don't want to just, I just don't feel it's time it, yet. You and know? It, well, I, I definitely agree with, you know, that whether or not it's time, it's tough because it, once again, it's like, yeah, all these concerts are happening. All these bands are out there doing it, but they're also getting like, it's like a bunch of the shows are still getting canceled though. That's COVID's not fucking gone. You know, we're just yeah, like, right, well, right. let's just, do it and see what happens until yeah, they right. cancel it you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and yeah the, and i hate this cycle i hate that yeah and that's that's kind of the cycle we're in right now is just right fucking hoping for the best yeah totally totally i agree with you 100 percent. so yeah i mean like everybody always talks we're all still like the best <laughs> of friends like wayne's expecting a baby and justin adopted a little girl so we're all like that's amazing. On dad calls now. Like, what are you oh, doing? Yeah. What are you doing oh, today? You know? Oh yeah. So yeah. So I mean, we're <laughs> we're all the best of friends. We'll see. Like, I have plans to release my own music again. I did Casa Loma, yeah. which was uh literally came out at the worst time. It was in the height of the George Floyd riots, and it yep. was during the middle of the pandemic. And I was like, oh yeah, by the way. You know, well, that's, that's, the the, that's yeah, actually dude. great that like you you bring it up that was actually the next thing we we're going to go into because yeah you did that in june of 2020 you know and the heart of the heart of shit just everything right. going wrong everywhere and right right like in in casa loma is a deeply personal record yes i've been away i gotta say i don't want to be here anymore uh, right I was I was listening through it yesterday, and uh, can awesome. you tell us a bit about like what it's about in the recording process of that? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You're right. It is it is like more of a. It was kind of like a therapy session for me in a weird way. Um, I had gone through a lot of losses, and um, you know, really really close ones, tragic ones, and then you know. I lost my dad early on through man overboard touring. So like I was kind of, there was a point in time where I was playing these shows and then flying to, to be with my dad who we weren't, no, we didn't know what was happening, you know? So um, a lot of that stuff just kind of goes away because I come home and I'm like, I do the stuff and I got to go right back out on stage and be like, everybody clap your fucking hands. What's up? Defend pop punk, you know? And then like, I'm like, get done. I'm like, well, that's like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, yeah. so I never really had a, a point in time to face all that stuff, you know, so I, I kind of did it through the only, you know, like when I said the same thing when I, when I was writing it, like, I can't be sad and be a dad at the same time. Mm-hmm. You can't walk into the house and be grumpy and be like, you know, like, whoa, is me. Like, I'm trying to get through these mm-hmm. issues. You got to be on, man. My kids are on. So I can't be sad. My truly only outlet was writing these songs. So I was like, I didn't even plan on putting them out, you know, like I sent them to Jake Brown because he had lost his dad. And I was like, yo, bro, like just wrote this song about my dad. You might connect on it, you know, like, cause we've talked about like, you know, moving past stuff like that, you know, maybe right. you'll find a little piece in this. And he was like gracious enough to be like, yo, I'll put this out if you want to put it out, you know, like That's awesome. I, 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 I'm down. So, you know, I was like, wow. Yeah, I guess I'll put it out because a big part of it came to like, you know, like when I'm when I'm not here anymore, I wish I had something from like my dad or the people I lost. Like, like I always said, like that letter in the desk moment, you know, Yeah. like, yo, if you're if you're reading this asshole, I'm done. I'm out of here, you know, (laughs) like anything I would have taken. So one of the songs is for my kids being like, yo, like it's all going to be good, you know, but that song won't do. And the crazy trippy high part about it all is is that song won't do what it's supposed to do until I am gone kind of thing. Yeah. So like, that's the crazy part of it. So yeah. And then I was on the fence about even putting it out. I was like, what if people hate this? And they're like, this song sucks. I was like, it's about my kids. <laughs> what would I do? I'd be like tw- fighting people on Twitter. Like, well, this song's actually about my dad. Like, so I was like, fuck, do I really want to do this? You know? <laughs> but then I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm doing it. Yeah, and that song is uh, that song's uh, Olivia Marley and the Duck Pond, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, that's a it's a great song. The whole album's good. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah, a really good you. album. It's nice. It's like chill, and uh, it, it's definitely it's definitely hits home if if you're sad. You know. It, oh it, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I think actually, it coming out. The weird part is it coming out during these crazy times, like you said in June when everything was pretty crazy. I it actually did a little better than I thought because I was getting a lot of messages from people being like, "Dude, like this is like helping me right now." Like, it, but like you know the songs are sad but they do have like a hopeful meaning yeah. in them so I, I was getting a lot of messages from people being like yo this is like actually hitting hitting different right now because mm-hmm. of everything so i guess it was like a little bit of a blessing in disguise Man, how in a weird way that, that that kind of impact on not only friends but strangers i think oh right yeah that's one yeah, of the I mean, things about about this whole this whole thing that we deal with music it's so right it's so right weird yeah, um, yeah, you hate saying it out loud, but you're like, that is the power of uh, music. Uh, man. That's the power <laughs> of music, man. Dude, it's, it's yeah, the, yeah, it's that's the worst. Yeah, that's what we do, boys. It's the worst, <laughs> but like when you think about it, dude, there are people across the world now that have access to any kind of music you'd ever want to listen to. So there are, you know, you can look on your Spotify right now and probably find people from France and Germany and Spain just like listening to your music and you're just like, holy shit. Like, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. this is insane. It's how insane. This just connects. I, re- the I, internet, I remember, man. like, I remember, like, my first one of my first bands. You know, we thought when this, you know, when Napster was big. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, and we were like, oh, let's get our shit on Napster. You know, we'll we'll try and get it out there to people over Napster. And we were so psyched because we had we had like five fans from like Australia, and we're like fuck yeah man yeah we're going we're going we're going we're going to australia this is what it feels like to hit the big times (laughs) (laughs) it got it was bad well Well, i I mean like isn't aren't first bands always yeah Yeah. oh my god just just, just, let's just be that was definitely like a mic in the middle of the room and then singing in a microphone like the just two mics and then hitting record on a fucking cassette player (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah the first the first band we recorded actually in my neighbor's basement on tape it was four tracks so you only got four tracks you know yeah. so like we played live all the music as one and then we did the leads as the second and then we did both vocals at the same time as the third and then you bounce everything to the fourth so it was just like so crazy you know and you're like right. playing your ass off trying yeah. to like nail it and you're like, damn, you messed up right at the end. And you do it again. Do the whole yeah. thing again. Do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so crazy. It's so crazy to think about like how it but, is now. You're like, one more time, one more time, one more yeah. time. Yeah. But even then, end. so like even then, like you were in your own way, you were still producing. Um, so let's <laughs> yeah. let's bring that back. Uh, let's bring it back here for a second. With um, you produced and engineered for a lot of artists that Pat and myself and unsigned pop punk that we actually work with and we're really big fans of these people um you know for example title fight the the magas i think that's how you pronounce magwas. it magwas magwas, magwas. magwas. Yeah. all system go and our, some of our friends in goalkeeper just just to name a couple right yeah yeah uh, which part of the music <clears throat> industry do you feel that you enjoy the most at this stage in your life working in the studio or being a band on the road working in the studio a million percent yeah so like, yeah I, I why though like because i mean let's be honest everyone's big dream when they're in a band is like, we're gonna tour the world we're gonna you know we're gonna tour the right. u.s we're gonna hit the road we're never gonna stop i'll be gone 10 months out of the year it's like okay well what's realistic right. so I, I was that i did yeah. that dude you, I was, you've I done both that. yeah but i said those words too you know right. like like i like i i was always recording and then doing the band at the same time. You know, I, I'm a drummer, so I, I never really sang and played anything until, like, I started recording other bands. And I was like, I think I can sing, you know? Like, I think I can do that. So <laughs> when the band would leave, that. I would, like, you know, write my own songs and, like, test my own voice out. You're like, Melodyne? Then, I could use that. I could figure that out. Yeah, no, this is before <laughs> Melodyne. This is, oh. like, first. Yeah, this is, like, early stages of auto-tune. Yeah, we were in, like, 04. Ooh, probably yeah. 2004 i was doing that yeah so um yeah that's how that's how it was then I, um and then you're so what, what was the question <laughs> so like which part 
which part do you enjoy the most? So oh, you, said, well, you said the studio, yeah, but, but like, right. why? Like, what about doing studio work and working with other bands is, what about that is, is more for you? I, it's just what I do, man. I love it so much. I've been, literally been doing the same thing since I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it's, it's the one thing in life I'm really good at is listening to a song, dissecting it, and helping people get it to where they need it to go. Like, I like to think of myself as the perfect buffer between, like, your band and the people that you want to reach and how they're going to perceive it, mm. you know? So, for me, it's always, I just love being in the trenches every day and, like, getting the drum takes. Like, do it again. Like, we're going to get it again. Like, get pumped <laughs> yeah. up. Like, get the guitar take again. Like, we got this. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I love going into work every day mm. and, like, making these bands feel like they can fucking do it too yeah like so like when the band is in the studio and they are like i'm talking about like from all systems go to people like this band time who are like they're grown fucking men you know so like when when every band is in the studio like jumping screaming like high-fiving i have a, i have a partner who well he works with me his name's don maggi um and I say to him all the time, I was like, dude, we're unfucking defeated in the studio. We're undefeated. Like every band that comes in here leaves better. And like, it's because we're fucking putting the work in, the time, the love, like it's our shit. Like we are undefeated. So I don't know. Absolutely. It's just my passion, I guess. That's awesome. The, That's the awesome. Being on the band and being in the tour was a, was a plus for me, you know? Yeah. All right. That, so we got, we got one okay. last thing we're going to ask you before we take a break. Um, right on. If you could give our listeners one piece of advice that you wish you had known when you were younger, or when you were first starting out, what, what, would it, what would it be? Dude, it sounds so cliche, but it, it seriously for me would be like, stop every now and then and like, look around and take it in and be like, damn, we did this. We are here like living in the moment kind of shit because there's so, I mean, like life goes so fast on the, on the road, you know, you're like, you're, you're in Boston, then you're in New York, then you're in Philly, blah, 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 like, and you start to take it for granted for a minute. Like I would complain when our band had to go back to Japan to play shows, right? you know? And I'm like, I get it. Cause I, I record bands on like the ground level. And I knew, I was like, this isn't, this is bad. Like we, <laughs> this is not the right way to do it. You know, yeah. like. I just and, and I think a lot of it's because I didn't just stop and be like, damn, like we are, we did that, we just did that. That's yeah, I'm in, so. I'm in fucking Japan right yeah. now. Yeah, what, what the fuck? Right, right. <laughs> and you know, you're going. It depends. Yeah, you know, life gets in the way, dude. You're like stuff happens at home when you're away. So you're like either FaceTiming with loved ones or you know, you're everybody's trying to make their shit work, right? And not rock the fucking boat, you know. And being away for eight months a year, like, man, Overboard tore our fucking asses off. So, like, we were away for, like, six to eight months a year. And, you know, you're juggling life, you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's, it's hard to stop and be like, I appreciate this moment right now, you know? So, that's, yeah. that's seriously on, like, some old head shit, <laughs> what I would say. Dude, honestly, though, real. like, so we asked that question for a lot of, uh, for almost all of our, our, uh, our, our guests and... Uh, I think this is the first one that we've had where that's the case. We're just yep. top, stop and take, take a breath because one, everything's okay. Two, I don't think you've realized like where you are right now and how much more, you know, you've made it quote unquote uh, to the, to who you used to be two years ago. And then how much more you'll be or how much farther you'll be down the road in the next two years, like yeah. stop and just breathe. Cause it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's got their own definition of success. So I think when you're on the road and you're pushing and trying to get, grow your band, like you want to be successful. I got to be successful. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like it becomes a job. It becomes like a clock in clock out. Right. So yeah, it's tough. It fly, it comes, it goes as fast as it comes. Yeah. You know? So, yeah i preach that to the bands in the studio they probably think <laughs> i'm old as hell but no, i don't dude. care <laughs> there's, there's there's a nostalgic there's a nostalgia to it but with that we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back i'd like to take a second to thank shameless souls for sponsoring this portion of today's episode shameless souls is a fun-hearted alternative independent clothing brand inspired by music and self-liberation. Artist and LGBTQ owned Chris Wolf of Illinois dedicates to you, Shameless Souls, 
the real rock stars of the world who live in one's true skin. Always take pride in who you are and keep resilient. There's no shame about it. Stay shameless. Make sure to stop by www.shameless-souls.com to get some goodies and use our code SHAMELESS20 to save 20% off your order. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the show. And we're Brack. 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 You know what? Brack, Fuck it. We're Brack. Baby. Fuck it. <laughs> okay. We are Brack. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, welcome. So, <laughs> welcome, Brack. Oh, welcome, Brack. Uh, now you we broke bear. Uh, uh, so now we're going to hop into our obscure question segment. Um, no way. That happens. That's cool. Yeah. See, we switch it up. We, we like to do, you know. Uh, All right. We're a music podcast that also just likes to ask fucking dumb questions. Yeah, um, because all right. we're all in bands, and yeah, yeah. and we've all done there. we've all done the same <laughs> podcast. Yeah, a, yeah. a lot of times. So we wanted to make something that was a little different. Um, right, so right. we start out similar, you know, and then we yeah. just switch it on, and then we just go we just it. See. So starting with the obscure questions segment, the first one in here, just I need to know is I, I've heard, you know, is it true they used to that you used to sell coffee before doors open at warp tour <laughs> oh my god yeah i did i uh i sold um iced coffee yeah iced me coffee. and just me and justin started um justin plays guitar and man overboard on warp tour i just wanted iced coffee <laughs> and it was a way to get iced coffee because there's no iced coffee on warp tour nope yeah. let's start there if you like iced coffee warp tour ain't your scene bro you gotta go somewhere <laughs> else so he would brew it at night. He would make cold brew at night. And I would walk around before doors open to like the crew, the stage people. And I would scream like I was at a Phillies game. I'd be like, ice coffee, three dollars. And I'd sell coffee. Our, be- our, be- our We have a song called Dead End Dreams. The company was called Dead End Beans. I had, we okay. had like loyal loyalty cards, like every 10 punches, you got a free cup. Um, it got so popular that I wore, I had to wear a walkie talkie, like a radio <laughs> and like bands would know what channel I was on. They'd be like, coffee guy, where are you at? And I'm like at the monster stage and like people would roll up, get their coffee. Um, I met everybody from like the people building the stages to like Kevin Lyman's right hand man. Like I literally could have ran for mayor on Warp Tour. I presented, <laughs> I presented an award at like the AP music awards and Somebody was in the crowd and thought, like, some said to somebody, like, why is a coffee guy on stage? Right? <laughs> it's the fucking coffee guy. <laughs> fucking coffee guy. Yeah, I made more money that I made more money that year selling coffee than the, than I made for the band. So I was like, fuck it. Dude, I mean, <laughs> the, the hustle is real. It's it never yeah. it, grind never stops. <laughs> I was telling people it was Literally. stump town. I, t- I told people it was stump town coffee. Justin came on the bus one day. He was like, Are you telling stump town's like one of the like end all be all coffee brands he's like are you telling people you're selling stump town i was like yeah he's like dude we are not doing that stop saying that and i was like these people who say they love coffee were taking a sip and like dude this is so good they don't know that's fucking awesome man yeah like yeah. i was um i got that because i was i was talking to some friends of mine uh in there i was letting him know that i was going to be talking to you today and he's like oh yeah you fucking talking to the coffee guy and i'm like what <laughs> no he's way. like oh yeah I fucking yeah I, and, he, and he reminded me because i did a couple of years of warp tour and i fucking remembered that but i forgot all about it you were and, a customer uh, i i don't think i did i didn't i don't drink a lot of coffee but uh i i worked at the plug your holes tent okay yeah and uh yeah so like I definitely remember. Mine. What's that? Coffee clients of mine. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they were. <laughs> Just get a tattoo. Yeah. Coffee guy tattoo. Coffee guy. <laughs> That's my next thing. Yeah, man. All right. Now listen closely. This All is right. important. Oh, it's a very man. personal question. All right. What would you do for a Klondike bar? And what is too far? Oh my God. I haven't heard that saying since I was a kid. My mom would sing it in the house. <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> well, I don't know. Good, I would I would stand inside a full microwave 
for five and let it run for five seconds and then get out. Damn. That's, wow. that is uh dedication that, that, to, to the Klondike brand. Yeah. Absolutely. If you, I saw a question that said, if you got half a million dollars to stand in a mic in a full body <laughs> microwave and let it run and you got a half a million dollars for each second that you, that it was running, how many seconds would you sit in there for? Holy shit. Let's go, Pat. You're up first. How many seconds? Okay. No, I, I like that. This is a good question. Let me, let me think. Um, I think I, I want, go ahead. Yeah, you go. I'm thinking oh, still. Oh, fuck, man. I don't. Half a mil every second. Microwave. Whole body. I, I, maybe eight seconds. Wow. Oh, okay. I, I you know, I microwave a lot of things. On, on like you know five Microwave seconds. works. <laughs> you know how microwave works. You're like a microwave guy. I, I'm, you know, I microwave some things here and there. Uh, yeah, we all do. I, I call use myself an expert. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could be kind of. An I know expert. my wattage. I know. Yeah, my well, wattage. well, that's the other question. What's the wattage on this bad boy? <laughs> I'm gonna get morbid, but uh, if I die and I'm still in there, does that still count? You don't get the money. Well, we're. I mean, it doesn't like, matter. If I could like, if I have a beneficiary like my kid. <laughs> no, you don't get to sign in. You don't have a trust before you go in there. Oh, damn it! Well, if I don't have my trust fund, uh, <laughs> I'm going uh, five seconds too. Dude, you went five but, seconds. No, uh, Pat went eight. I think I can I, handle eight. I, I think I, I could do like, it. Like, I don't want to be that guy and say six, but realistically, I'd probably only go four. I, I you know, I was, I, I was thinking I, five, but I was like, you know what? Honestly, like. I think, I think I could, it depends, you know. I on, have so on, much hair on my body. It will sizzle. I will be cooked with it. Yeah, it'd be even, faster than normal. That yeah, might be a just, thing. You whoosh. might shave your whole body before you go in there. Now, that, if that was the shave. case and I put on a oh, little sunscreen. Okay. I would, I would shave seconds. for a quarter, for a half a million dollars. That's <laughs> true. Absolutely. You, know, you I'll, could I'll shave for 50 bucks, man. Get in and get out. One <laughs> yeah, that's $500,000 right there. Yeah, Boom. I mean, like really. That's studio gear. Yeah, I mean, like, nothing, but if nobody wants to change, you'd be like, "Fuck, I could have been like, I could have been a millionaire." Wait one more second. Yeah, no, I did. Oh, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you regrets. right now, I'll at least go two seconds. Oh, like, sure, I'm not getting out without it. Like, I can do two seconds. Well, beard two. Your... I'll keep the beard for two seconds. <laughs> All right, Five let's do our last later, question because shit. I really, I really want to see, I really want to see wh which one sticks out for you. Okay. What is one commercial that has randomly been stuck in your head? For me, oh my God. it's the J.G. Wentworth commercial. You know what I'm talking about? J.G. Wentworth commercial? J.G. Wentworth. Wentworth. Oh, J.G. Wentworth. 877 Cash Now. Oh, 877 Cash Now. Oh, yeah. That has been in my head since day one, right? Like, and I've never been able to get it out. That's like a, you're talking about a jingle. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, like a jingle or a commercial. It could be like you know, <sighs> you know, Jake from State Farm khakis. Right, right. It could be I, what... I always go ahead. I always like Len the Plumber. Len the Plumber. I don't know what that is. I know that Len one. The, Len the Plumber. <laughs> Call the Plumber today. Call Len the Plumber. You never well, heard that? The... No, well, that's, I, but I, that, that's but a that's plumber is probably be, more yeah. regional. Yeah, that's probably got to be a regional yeah, thing. Yeah, you're right. But you're right, that's you're not right. a bad one. Like no. as long as you know it, that's that's fine. <laughs> that's a good one. Len the plumber is a good jingle. Hell yeah. Damn, that's a really good question though. Now it's got me thinking about like what jingles do I really but, but, know? But, but like think about it. Do you remember back in like two thousand between like two thousand and two thousand ten? Yes, it's a whole decade. But like when commercials like were when we actually funny, watched commercials. Yeah, yeah. And, and and there wasn't Netflix, there wasn't there wasn't any streaming, like Netflix came in a DVD in your mail. Um yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, and we had to watch. I have, I have some Netflix DVD yeah. stories, right? But like, you know, what's we crazy watched that commercials all these... like as a whole generation, and not like I can go outside and yell JG Wentworth and probably get someone to respond. You know what I mean? No <laughs> way. Oh, oh, sure. oh yeah. Oh, I did it. I did it the other day, not outside, but just like I was like I was at the su a Super Bowl party. Just wait like, for somebody AAG like Wentworth, and then like two people were like eight seven seven cash now. Just go, just <laughs> just go sit in a like a, a 
you know, a bathroom stall at Walmart and just wait for somebody else to come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To test start it singing out. It. Really test it out. Hey, I've man. I've got join. I've got join in. I I think I've got two that just always I can think of as they, and and they're both probably regional ones as well, which is uh the O'Reilly. Oh oh oh. O'Reilly. Oh, O'Reilly, yeah, yeah. Auto Auto but see, oh, wow. but see, but see what <laughs> we you. always like. Me and my friends always, or just everyone I know does, because we do the childish thing. We've always done it. So, Auto farts. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Does yeah. Bob's Discount Furniture have one? Yes. <laughs> Bob's Discount What's Furniture. Theirs? Because theirs is always catchy too. I can't think uh, of it. I don't right remember now. it, but I, I'm, I was just, I was just in solidarity with the fact that we have one here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob's <laughs> Furniture. I know they have one. The Bobs are answering our call. <laughs> Jones that, barbecue and foot massage. Which, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. What's your second one, Pat? Uh, Arrowhead Auto Body, and I'm pretty go. sure that's just a local one. But it's like Arrowhead Auto Body. Don't just go to anybody. Arrowhead Auto Body. Gonna fix it right. <laughs> That's pretty good. There, on the there's a there's one on the ninety four one like the sports talk radio. It's just a guy that talks. He's like, if I'm not licensed in your state, that's okay. Somebody <laughs> is. He's like a divorce lawyer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> on the on the sports talk radio channel, you're like, this is a great spot for this. <laughs> this is awesome. This, <laughs> this is good placement here. You're really diving into your demographics. See so what 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 we're gonna need to do now for this just this segment. We're gonna need to reach out to all of these businesses and be like, look, we we basically did a commercial for you for in you. this. Do you um, want to sponsor this episode? <laughs> sponsor it, and then let me record the next jingle. There you yes. go. Yes, there you We've go. We've got somebody to record the next jingle. It'll make you a hit. Probably go right on the billboard, right on the billboard charts. But what my daughters listen to like My Little Pony. They're my mm-hmm. house is a farm because there's so many fucking My oh, Little yeah. Ponies around. Pony farm, and sir. they they are like some of the songs sound like New Found Glory. I'm like, oh my god. This is this is the chorus. My daughter's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good one. You like the shit's song. popping like, off. Yeah. <laughs> so they've been watching Encanto. Those songs are out of control. They're Dude, so good. When when surface pressure drops, I lose yeah. my shit. I lose. sounds like Fall Out Boy wrote that song. It does. It's thank you, Patrick Stump. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna move on to our very last segment. Pat, introduce Nick to this beautiful segment that we have okay this last segment this is rapid fire questions you're basically oh you're just going to hear it and you're going to answer you're going to you're going to speak right. from you're going to speak from the heart and shoot from the hip are, are yeah. you ready i'm ready as i'll all, ever be pat all right man pineapple on pizza yes or no no mtv or fuse MTV. playstation or xbox PlayStation. okay is a sweatshirt a sweater? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know why it hit me so funny. Because uh, I'm really fucking thinking about it. No. I agree. Yeah. That's the correct That's answer. That's the right that, answer. That, that is, is the, the right answer. answer. However. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I don't know, man. It's different when you have kids. You know. It just comes out, I like, mean, a sweatshirt. A, a sweatshirt's a sweatshirt or a hoodie. You know I that I mean. Say sweatshirt. What's up? I don't, think I, I don't even think I call it anything anymore. Like I'm putting this on. This thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, up. most just, people I just, gotta wear something. <laughs> most people call it like a sweatshirt or a hoodie, but there are those just fucking weirdos out there that call it a sweater. A, yeah, I picture and, I picture sweater Christmas time <laughs> sweater. Yeah, Christmas right. Time. Yeah, a sweater is just you know it's a completely yeah. different fabric. Exactly. It's cool. a really exactly. good question, Pat. <laughs> I, let's keep it moving pat keep, keep all right sorry keep sorry no, it's all good it's oh, all good I'm proud. This is amazing. you know what i'm i am proud of that question you know yeah, i that, it is one I, I i will take with me oh yeah me. tom it's delong or matt skiba oh man in blank in yeah in blank tom delong that, that, I mean, that's the correct answer that, too. Uh, this one's back, this one's too when, when Tom DeLonge comes back, though, and they all play together, it's gonna be crazy. Wow. See, yeah. I could get behind that one hundred percent. It's gonna happen. Come on, oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I think I, here's one of the things we said this in another podcast as well. But I mean, if they're gonna go tradesies, I think I'd like to hear a, a Tom DeLonge and Alkaline Trio. Then 
No, I wouldn't mind that. It'd be awesome. Dom from Man Overboard tours with Acaline Trio, and he said that. I mean, they're the coolest ever. So, yeah. I, I mean, I fucking love Alkaline Trio, though. Yeah, it's it's so good. Yeah, but okay. definitely Tom DeLong. Guitar Hero or Rock Band? I'd say Guitar Hero, but I'm not really true at either of them. <laughs> Fair enough. This is the last one, and usually the most difficult one for people. Newfound right. Glory or Simple Plan. You found glory. Easy. That was that was that was easy. <laughs> yeah. No Typ- thought. To typically, that we get a few a few of those questions hit. Hard, Honestly, so. it's crazy. Like simple plan around here anyway was never like a popular band. Like yeah. Philly, New Jersey. I like. I feel like it was never. You know, we we never really took them in as like a band. Band. It, well, I don't know. It, it, I feel like the East Coast is kind of it. It, it feels more newfound glory territory, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they're Florida, you know. Like I don't know, you know, and, and not only yeah. that, you know, but they, you know, they were kind of some of the originators of like right. that easy course style, and, and they came before Simple Plan too. Yeah, right. They did. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Simple Plan, so, I feel like they just like went right to MTV. They didn't like do anything. And then I. I, well, they did a lot my, more in Canada at first. Well, yeah, they yeah. were. I mean, that doesn't Canadian count. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and my first, I mean, and like my first memory of Simple Plan is, you know, they they were right out the gate with Mark Hoppus. You know, they mm-hmm. they had that one song where he uh, cameoed on it, and it's like, okay, well, you came out swinging. <laughs> yeah, and the crazy part is, is I don't think I've ever heard that song that you're talking about ever in my life. That that is that is my favorite song of theirs. I'll have to check it out. It's uh, I do anything. That's what it is. Oh, he sings on that. Do anything. Yeah. And he's like in the music video for it. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Well, that's what I mean, like Simple Plan never was a thing here. Dude, that's no? fair. But Nick, uh, you you did it. You made it through the podcast. I did it. We made it. You, 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 we're here. Uh, we're here now. That, thank you. All that's left yeah. that you have to do as homework. Not even. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All you got to do is plug your band, plug your brand, tell us what's next, what's going on in the life of Nick, and, and then we'll send you on your way. Nothing really is going on in my life, man. I don't do anything. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. I, cool. I'm well, recording. Another... Just... Yeah, yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> that goalkeeper record. Um, yeah so that's yeah. coming out soon ish i'm really excited about that um that's gonna be tight a, mm. yeah a lot of the bands that i've worked with are because i've been at the studio for a year a lot of them are starting to release music now so they're i have a lot of good music that's coming out under my name and you know i start band i start all systems go i guess tomorrow actually we start another couple songs so i'm i'm in there I'm grinding hell yeah well hell yeah man hell yeah man well, dude, thank you again for coming on this podcast and just spending a good hour with us. Like this is yeah, man. this is for fun for us, me. dude. Like I, you know, we, you know, I grew up listening to. I'm young. I'm younger than Pat. That's totally fine. It's just I grew up listening to Man <laughs> it's Over. It's totally Pat. fine. And that's awesome, like, man. Thank you. Like this is you know this is like this is cathartic for me. I enjoy this, but it's also really cool to just like he, like hear your shit like straight from the yeah, fucking yeah. source totally. you know, just like totally man yeah music is a really cool like we, we were talking with like uh, yeah cliches. i appreciate you guys what even want me on so thank you yeah dude, oh hell of yeah. course but Absolutely. real quick we were talking cliches music has a really cool way of just like connecting people and like this is fucking awesome so thank you like, hell yeah man being here dude thank you and, uh, yeah. i appreciate it and with that uh we're gonna we're gonna call it an episode and we'll see you guys what next fucking monday Let's go. Yeah, see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. Thank you to those who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere else you stream your podcast. If you're in the position to help us grow, head over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsigned pop punk. Let us know in the comments below who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see. Thanks so much.